What's popular YouTube? Another day, another demo. Woohoo! Who you got? Number 16. Let me know in the comments below who you think today's player is. Just write the name. Just throw it down, you know? And as we get down, I'm sure we're going to see more comments and stuff because this is the sketchy part of the list. And as always, a disclaimer, this is a companion list to HLTVs. But unlike last year's, this is just who I think is the top 20. Who are the top 20 players of 2021? This is Lau's list of the top players of 2021. I'm recording here in Copenhagen on my last day here. It's the world final. This is the last day of the year for me as a caster, actually. So I'll have some time off, go home, do the Christmas thing, take a break. And, uh, and then come back uh, in uh, in January. But this is at the culmination. So make sure, I mean, this video is not going to be out. I'm, I'm recording this way ahead of time now. So you're, you're not going to see this. But anyways, who is your guest for the day? Here at number 16, I think it's going to be, it's going to be probably somebody that everybody has on their list somewhere. I, I would say that probably, okay? Uh, the first clue is once again, that he has an iconic hairstyle. Iconic. Everyone recognizes his hairstyle. He's a player who said he wished he leaned into the meme more. That's what he said. That's what he said. He's a guy who some call the savior of Counter-Strike. He's been known to save an op. That's right. It's your boy, Jane. All right? We've locked it down. We figured out where he goes. Jesus Christ, Jame himself, the savior of CSGO. The opper for Virtus Pro. And the player who always has good stats. Now, I've got a love-hate relationship with James, all right? I actually, you know, when I, when he was back on Avangar and they were making their moves, I was like, damn, this guy is the craziest, craziest up-and-coming player. You know, he was one of a few CIS operas that I felt like were absolutely elite at the time. And, you know, he obviously, uh, he, he's, he's done so well. I mean, he's just done so well. And his team... Of course, for some, incredibly frustrating to watch, right? The team that can make your day a little bit longer, make you late for your dentist appointment if you want to watch it, if you want to cheer towards the end. And they can crawl back in any single match, which is what makes them exciting. But then they can also crawl all the way to the finish line with these very slow rounds and then suddenly blow it at the end. But overall, the team as a whole has had a pretty impressive year, I would say, you know. They're, they're a roster of boys who have stayed together as friends. And even though we treat them like some of the other Tier 1 competition when it comes to will they be able to win this match or, or whatever, they still very much are impressive for the fact that they haven't had to bring on tons of new talent and you know try to make the golden roster moves that cost a ton of money. No, instead, they've held it down with Kicker, kicker Buster, you know, Sanji... He should ever treat a man like VP treated Sanji, all right? And they let the door hit him on the way out. They've got in Flit, and Flit's been good, of course. Flit's been good. But the one roster move, the golden roster move that they made was grabbing Yekindar, all right? So Yekindar coming onto the team has made a, a world of difference. Has also made the team a lot more fun to watch. Yeah, what, what can you say? I, I'd say that when we look at, you know, big events this year, we have James did wasn't in a, attendance at every single one, uh, didn't make it through the blast circuit and everything like that, but... He had a really, he had deep, very decent placings with Virtus Pro at these big events, and also was able to get into top four, top five, fifth through eight. They beat Heroic in the first round of playoffs, if I'm not mistaken, and lost to G2, right? Something like that. Anyways, in this run, and we're gonna watch the Heroic match actually that they played on stage, and it, you know, this 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 is the mark on the record, like kind of for James, because I always take his stats. Okay, his stats are actually really good, right? But when I look at James, he is one of the players, one of the few players, and I'm sure you can name the other ones. Laymeth. Ooh. You look at their stats, you take their stats down a peg, you still have to regard that they are very good, strong players, super strong, and their role and their style of play means they'll stay off uh, alive more often. And for you to encourage that they change their play style and really represent, you know, truly how much, you know, they should die and everything like that doesn't really make sense. You know, if they're you're to ask them. They're just playing within a round for their team, trying to win the tournament, and this is the best play style. And James is a very influential op in the way that he saved uh, the op over and over again. All right, now I'm getting to... I realize I got to the point where we should start talking over the game. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Um, 
but yeah, there's there's no big uh, marks on the record here for Jame, except for the the Stockholm Major is the one where it just you know wasn't like all star level performances, and maybe is the reason that they could they couldn't crawl forward even more, right? I, I think uh, it's possible they could have gone even deeper. They're very scary at this point. But a twelve map run at the Major, and uh, deep run at IEM Winter, really really strong event there as well, and that's where James year ended so he here he is number 16 for me yeah let's talk about it let's uh go ahead and watch a match so this is the stage match for jame 1.55 rating across this series actually phenomenal especially to do it in front of the crowd you know the question is a bunch of land players on this roster of course major finalists but can they you know has it been too long are they going to be able to shake off the rust how's your kinder look and he actually he didn't he wasn't himself but he was still well he was still good this is just one map that we're looking at here where jame absolutely carried the hell out of um, the roster. Buster was right behind him. Actually, he had some help in this game. But in this match, we're looking at a in ancient game, which is what tipped the scales for me. Okay, I really wanted to watch an ancient game and a 15 and 7 CT side, all right? And I figured if we watch the T side, that we might actually run out of time in the day, right? So I didn't want to watch the T side because I actually have to leave for my call time in one hour. So I need at least three hours to watch a 15 round T side half from Virtus Pro. They somehow make it possible, right? They told you that uh, the maximum amount of time a T side could be is like 30 minutes or something like that. No, not with Virtus Pro. They'll find a way to make it longer. They get paid by the minute, I think. Is uh, was it Moses said that they get paid by the minute? Some nice banter from Moses. But who is who is James? Okay, he's a, he's a Russian opper. He's a guy who's can't come up with the other three players on the team. Of course, rest in peace, Sanji. Rest in peace. All right, he he's he's been alongside Buster uh, Kickert and um, Buster Kickert, your Kinder, Buster Kickert, your Kinder, James Sanji. Oh yeah, Buster and Kickert. Oh yeah, wow, he's only got two friends now. He's only got two friends uh, who have who have been with him the uh, entire way through. But Flit's a friend, okay? Flit's a friend. We don't have to we don't have to take Flit down by talking up Sanji, okay? Julian Hasanji. All right. Uh, Mr. Mr. James, super high accuracy with his op. He hits incredibly difficult shots. I would say for me, when I think about James, and the reason he's not higher or lower down the list, on the one hand, his stats are inflated. His DPR is his best stat, and, and that's uh, deaths per round. So his DPR is, is one of the lowest. I think it's the first or second lowest in all of Pro CS because of the amount of times he will save if his team is not winning rounds. So that means you're not seeing overtly risky maneuvers from him on AWPs or in any given round. It's just not his game. He's playing clutch rounds and stuff like that. And he's playing those situations very well. So on the one hand, yes, his stats are a little bit higher than somebody who I would say is just as good as him, but plays a different role. So I want to keep that into account. But at the same time, I would also say that he is a quality player and he, he's also calling for this roster to top it off. And he takes on a lot of responsibility having to op. And I'd say he's a reason they win. He's You can't you can argue that Jame isn't impactful. And that's the one thing I'll say. So I do struggle with him a little bit. But, you know, in terms of awareness, I feel like he's level 100. I think he's up there with the best of the best in terms of awareness. I actually am shocked at his level of awareness sometimes. I mean, I really do feel like sometimes I... I'm, I'm just wonder like you know how how smart is he if there was some objective you know if we could look at Plato's objective form list and see is where is where is where where is James in terms of his uh, awareness level because it is so high in my opinion you almost always have a situation where you've got X-ray on you've got a player on the other side of a wall you've got James you know calculating using communication whatever it is thinking about where to look and it never falling off the angle that you need him to fall off of, right? If you're the other team, you have him constantly processing things appropriately and being very careful and a, and a very reliable for that reason. And I think that is absolutely the key to breaking teams apart. I mean, you could cut a lot of players from the roster. I don't think you could cut James. I think James and Yakinder are the ones that are the brand of the roster. And Yakinder has brought in this fire of playing a, a much more faster paced rifle style and way more explosive tons of opening duels and that is just a perfect fit for Virtus Pro isn't it now that they've found uh, some comfort with Yakinder the fact that James in the back line Yakinder's up front they po both put up huge numbers they both do insanely well with their specific guns um, 
I think that's what causes Virtus Pro to be one of the most annoying teams to play against. You ask a lot of pros, they'll tell you the same thing. Uh, talking to Alexi B, he said about James when you know during this period where he was starting to make a lot more appearances in the in in tier one matchups and some of the big tournaments. It would say when you play against James, it feels like he has an op 15 rounds out of a hat. Of course, hyperbole because pistol round, ecos, etc. Rounds, you know he doesn't have one. But because of the amount of times he's saving it forward, you have to keep track of the fact that it's always going to be in his hands and that his DPR is like a 0.5 something, whatever it is. So, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's actually incredible, you know, how, much he, how far he makes it go. And I think a lot of the CIS region as a whole has instructed the rest of the world in this meta of trying to make a single op go very far. I think that's a big thing. Um, you have Shiro who has a similar playstyle, and it might just be happenstance that these players are like the way they are, right? Because I don't think there was a meeting. I don't think there was a meeting of the minds, and everyone said, "All right, we got to save the op more as a region." I don't think that happened. I think they got kind of fortunate with the offers they found, and they both have similar playstyles. Maybe it's caused them to pick up players who play like that. But I think that one thing the CIS region has done very well in this regard is that they've they've recognized that the op cost 400 4000 so imagine imagine 400 dollar up 4750 dollars and if you if you lose it it can it can freak your half up right it can totally ruin it you might not have that many buy rounds with it and it's just expensive it just it's so expensive and if you make that up last an extra couple of rounds every time you're always making up for the cost. Now, the only drawback, of course, is not having a way to win the round when you decide to do that. But I think it, it makes perfect sense when you think about CS. You, you think you play the game uh, on its most fundamental level from the clock down and with the economy in mind at all times. And I think that that, that fits in perfectly uh, from the uh, economic perspective. Okay, here he gets traded out. No problemo. Glad to see Ancient since nobody's picking it anymore. What is going on? It feels like Ancient is the most hated map in the world. We haven't seen it at Blast like a uh, like a single time. I don't think it's made a single appearance at the Fall Final. I don't think it's made a single appearance here at the World Final. What the hell is happening? You, it, all these teams uh, used to pick Ancient all the time. Heroic would play it. Gambit would play it. Navi would first pick it. Um, but now a G2 would pick it all the time. Now it's just stopped, dude. People gave up on Ancient completely. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below about Ancient. Why do you think Ancient has fallen off so much? <clears throat> I actually hate that when YouTubers do that. It was always my biggest nightmare to think, like, I might end up becoming like that just because that's, like, the best way to do it. But try to strike some balance, right? We want the channel to grow, but we also... We don't, we don't want to end up like that, right? We don't want to end up like that. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about Ancient and, uh, yeah, just, uh, try to get as many combats as possible so I can farm my precious, drive the channel, Griffin, etc. and so forth. Can we get 100 likes on this? Can we surpass 100 likes? I know we can do it, guys, together. We, us. I'll keep the money, but we do, to we do it together. <coughs> Rant over. Jame on the rotation. This is a round, okay? We've got Jame. He's on an eco round. He has the op. Heroic are terrified of this op. Look how far away he can stand from Stown and kill him in one shot. It sounds so sim It sounds so simple. It sounds so Jame. And then on top of that, he finds ways to be effective. Because he's smart, he rotates so early, he doesn't have to make noise when this happens. Look at this, what a powerful position to be in. It's time that's not on Heroic's side. And Jane recognizes that he has an opportunity. Oh, man, I actually thought that he killed Kadian. Okay, all right, okay. Good night, Jame. Jamethan. Jesus, pain, Jame. But there's still no time to put the bomb down. And, oh, Kadian survives after time. Hey, great round from Kadian. We got to watch that from the third-party perspective. I, I mean, K Jane makes the right play there, right? Take the molly damage. Again, it's clock down CS, right? You see the clock in the red? Three players alive. Don't let him plant. Why would you do that? That's silly. So, as much as we talk about Jame, super careful, doesn't want to die, staying alive all the time. He's just a good player, and he plays... He leans on the, the slow side, right? He leans on the slow side. I mean that with all due respect. But, uh, ultimately, when he needs to take a risk that he knows is, it's going to be a good one, he'll still do it because he's a good player. He's a good player, man. Um... 
I am actually curious what other people's perception is about him, though. Uh, you know, because I feel like uh, one of the most divisive players out there. I mean, he's, he's easily one of the most divisive players out there. Now, uh, one thing we haven't seen from Jame in this match so far is starting out starting out Donut. Uh, we, we saw one round, a couple of kills from Donut, but this is where Shiro would stand. All right. So Donut is quite dynamic in the sense that if T comes in here, it's a little bit gambly. You don't know which angle is the best one to hold. Sometimes you, hand, you stand on the right side of the door. Sometimes you stand on the left. It's kind of like Home Alone, right? Where do you put the trap? That's the, that's the thing. And how foolish are the robbers? That's the other question. That's what we want to know. But um, James splitting the difference here. He's got some support. This could be very annoying. We'd love to see this setup work out. We hear that mid-smoke plume in front of the snipers, and the rest of Virtus Pro are leaning towards the A site. It's a blind gamble, but Heroic have now started to take contact. So, listen, they've triple reinforced this position. And it's, oh, well, okay. We'll grab that one for free. We saw another player. Uh, this is the only kill of the round, it looks like. We'll see if James can get anything out of this. And let's also see if James will save uh, an AK because he has every right to. He has every right to. It's not an op, though. He said, guys, um, I'll save, but I need someone to make me a promise right now. Who's going to drop me the op? Who is dropping me the op next round? I'm going to go for this if no one drops. Yakinder, I'm going to go for this if you don't give me an op next round. Yakinder said, fine, man, fine. And that was a real look into the communication of Virtus Pro. I promise. It was just like that. James, the one AK of the round. Whoa. They, oh, interesting. They throw a nade. So they throw a nade to push to separate the defense. So the CTs are playing potentially in mid. I like that push a lot, actually. You know, if they haven't crossed out yet or they're still flirting with the idea, playing with the wall, and you throw that HE, first of all, if it hits them, it does a lot of damage. Secondly, the nade smoke is the big one, I think. If they're standing anywhere around there, if there's someone on the left side, you can go for that trade. Okay, nice kill from Jame here. Let's talk about that more in a second. I like that tactic. And keeping on boost is so big. What a shot. What a shot. That's a moment where it's first bullet, and you know, Jame hits crazy shots at the AWP that he probably would have nailed it with an op as well. See what happens as the round progresses. There's still time for Heroic to actually mid-round over to the A site. Interestingly, Virtus Pro have not moved. And now they're coming in. James still alive. With some Heroics could win this round. No, Stown will put bullet between the eyes. That's a quickie. <gasps> wait, kicker. Does he win? I think I... Wait, hold on. No, okay, this isn't the round. <laughs> There's, I remember, I remember watching. I think it was this game. There's some crazy deagle round that I saw. Okay, it didn't happen. Sorry, pause champed really hard. Everyone, oh, I gave myself goosebumps there, waiting for that moment. I thought it was a moment. Can't remember if it's in this match or not. All right, but yeah, the nade smoke play through through the CT smoke on mid on a timing, and the nade can separate the defense. So if there's one on the left, the guy on the right is either going to be 50 HP tucked or sitting in nade smoke. For like a few seconds which is huge and you're pushing through on a on a round where you have an eco so that's a nice tactic for the eco round nade the right side push through the smoke i'm gonna copy and paste that one i like that it's a good play got it you know eco rounds is just about squeezing out as much ingenuity as possible you got a real dry lemon there and you're just trying to get as much juice as you can there's no there's there's just no money there's no reason to play in a standard way but you don't also don't want to just run out and push everything individually that doesn't make sense either um pihiko put it best actually a long time ago he said if you if you don't have a plan for an eco round you might as well skip it and that's the facts you can convert these rounds even if they're very unlikely teams make mistakes teams have very good aim on these uh pistols and i think there's a there's, there should always be some level of hope and, and those little tactics and stuff. It's it's not it's not so much about inventing. Inventing is a fool's game, actually. In life. Okay. Life life lesson. Okay, whoa. Nice shot. When James sets up that shot, he has to hit the flick. He's holding for the far angle. He's aware of the close one. But if you don't hold that deep like he's doing here, then the T's will come out, they'll press up against the wall, they'll flash over, and then you won't get any impact, right? So taking small risks like that can be very huge. Just the right side of the box as opposed to the left. If he's sitting here, the T's can pop up, they can even boost, 
they can throw flashes and push you off your position and you're just going to end the round with no impact it might get smoked out and have to sit behind it with an op all right and that's how we get safe situations so total shutdown there very annoying from james to just be patient and wait and wait and wait and wait outside long and we go right back to it oh well kind of another thing i want to talk about but now i'm kind of curious if her if he feels like heroic are going to be stubborn about the situation and come back to it this is one of those fool me once fool me twice rounds right if heroic come here and no one's here vp are going to look like fools but uh if they come back here and james in the exact same spot they are going to have zero confidence like they're going to be so mad at themselves they're going to be like oh i knew it i knew it why did i do that Instead of a different situation. Now, with no mid control, the problem for Jame here, I think, is he wanted to, he's thinking about going donut, but there's still this timing on middle, and there's only, uh, and obviously the B side is being taken control of, but no one's close in the middle, so Jame has to be aware of window, or sorry, sniper's nest, or candles, or whatever the hell you call this red room. It's just obviously not a very fun job, but the lurkers in here come out late. Very, very late. So you can either come in and try to clear this deep angle, but there's could be a player on either side. Uh, or you can just make a gamble and assume no one will come there. When he leaves and the rotation comes over, same thing for the next side. They've got to watch that. But they're actually pushing all the way through. So let's see what uh, what Jane will do about this situation. There's still a potential to get flanked and see... Okay. Oh, it was this round. Wow. Graffiti? Oh my god, that looks so nuts, Refresh. That looks so nuts. That looks so... We watched that from Refresh's POV, X-Ray on in the Major. We just watched that X-Ray off, and it was super clean. I wouldn't mind a little graffiti, okay? We could get a little graffiti going for that one. That was insane. That was insane. Maybe if they had won the series, you know? That was beast. Read their position so well. So, this flash here, it does a couple things. Super... Super normal, right? You just throw one through the smoke. Oh, stop them from coming out mid. But it takes attention away from your cubby player who's out mid. And you can't support. It also allows them to peek if they want to. And Buster, it looks like... Oh, he'll be playing in this spot looking for the boost. Jame actually jumps up, sees nothing. Makes a mistake by making some noise, but got some info with it. And here you have to worry about top boxes as well when you're offing. But... Uh, yeah, the, the map is actually built pretty well in these situations, right? There should never be a situation where an op can just dead hold an angle deep and not be able to have any counterplay for the other side. So they, there is some awareness of making the map and creating some good fights. No way you hit that, right? Oh! Oh! <laughs> wow. That was fast. I, I thought he shot and flicked way too late. This will open things up. He's shutting them down right now. And this is this is where the easy kills come in. The T's will make the, the, the most readable mistakes. And they'll try to take map control. There's not a lot of utility for them to do things creatively every every step of the way now. So this is where you can start holding the more normal angles as the time comes down. This is where you're going to see Jame wind it down. Play a little back. But so far we've seen him you know, very active with the defense at all times. We saw a lot of smart maneuvers out of Jame. I'm happy you made the list. I'm happy you had a great year. And uh, Virtus Pro are another team, kind of like Gambit, who they got, I think they broke into top five at one point at the beginning of the year. And the question was, is it going to be Spirit, Gambit, or Virtus Pro to be the tier two CIS team to break in and stay in the tier one? Uh, I didn't get a lot of predictions right uh, in, in this year, but I did say Gambit, we're going to be the one of the three that we're going to stick around the longest. Uh, I believed in that for sure. Uh, I didn't think Spirit would fall off. I thought they would still stay top 10. Rest in peace to Spirit in that roster. They're going to have to hope for greener pastures in the months to come. They've got some new players that they were trying out and playing with. Some unknown CIS talent, which you know is pretty scary. And Jame will get a tip. I think he actually hit a collide on that. And it's just right place, right time. No problemo. Oh, another nice one. Oof. It's gone skeet shooting. This is, this is big. This is a nice demo. It's moving at a nice pace. Good amount of shots, lots to talk about. I do love a Jame demo because again, his awareness is so good. I, he's not a reactive player. He's not a reactive player. Like we talked about Nafly, he's like an intuitive player. When I talk about Raz, more reactive. And when I look at reactive players, in my opinion, a lot less to talk about. Some very nice highlights, but it, I don't feel that special quality quite as much 
you know, just a high emphasis on, on mechanics. Jame, I feel, I feel like is insanely cerebral all the time. Really like watching him play. And another one of the list of IGLs and IGL demos are actually always really good. So we should start watching more IGL demos instead of star player demos. Um, but star players always work because they've got everything, right? They've got the intuition, they've got the preparation, they've got the aim, and they've got the consistency. So I always put on a show for that reason. But Automatic made a cool comment about IGLs, and he said, like, he loved watching God B demos and IGL demos because he said he felt like since they can't always fall back on their mechanics, and, you know, in terms of reputation, IGLs don't always have the best mechanics. Jame is not one of those. Uh, they have to figure out better ways to play than a lot of star players or really, really strong riflers, for example, because they can't hold the hard right angle and hit the shot and get the 2K and make everyone scream. They have to be creative about their utility. They have to be careful about their uh, risks. And they play very, I noticed, the IGLs play very selflessly, which also makes them fun to watch. But for all those reasons, we should do Kerrigan demo. All right, back to it. Honestly, I, I'd be reclining the Lazy Boy right now a little bit if I was Virtus Pro. I It feels like Heroic have just been running into them very slowly every single time. We haven't seen Jame get flashed. Definitely not enough. They are trying to play a risky version of CS where they are finding the opening and then overrunning a site, but the talent is too strong across the board for Virtus Pro in this spot. Jame has been at pretty much every choke point that they've decided to go to. And we see, okay, the A exec is starting to come through and a little adjustment from Jame. He doesn't get the first kill. Oh, nice second frag. Looks for more because he's going to get swung on from the side, so that's why he whipped out the Tech 9. But maybe the one kill is enough. He actually got the Molly off after just hearing the smoke bounce, and that delays for Flit to get a little comfortable on this back box. Such a important position to be able to hold. And now Kadian... Oh, is it Kadian or Stown? It's down here in the 1v2. Let's see if he can pull it off. Uh, round number 15. The world's slowest rotation through Donut. I actually can't believe this. Uh, Buster's just... Okay, he's just holding one angle. He's got a good line, actually. And so with this, I think they can make sure he doesn't cross to the right. So Flit never has to check uh, the temple. And that's all you have to do. And now Flit can tuck box, hold left. And uh, he's covered. So now Stown makes a cross. Wow, was key play from Stown. After it cooled off, that was very, very smart from Stown. Ooh, I'd love to see Stown win this round, actually. I think he showed that he has a clue about what was happening. And he dipped out, came back in. Now Buster has to retake with the op. This is not a front spot. He's got to lug this op and the scope around. <laughs> He's clearing these angles. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, wow. Stown wins that. That's a beautiful round. What a round from Stowny. This is a demo about Jane, by the way. We're not here to talk about Stown. I love that. I hope you enjoyed that. that was, I think the best favorite demo so far was actually really, really... Uh, good match, a lot of cool stuff, cool rounds. I knew he was going to deliver. Jame is a solid player. I always take him down a peg. I neg him a bit. I say, all right, your stats are, are definitely too high a lot of the times, but fact is he's a strong-ass player. He's good with the op. Very influential year, I feel like, and on the play styles of other players uh, in the meta. He's been talked about a ton, and I think he's a huge team. His team made deep runs, and they had a, a solid, solid placings, although the one small mark was a subpar major performance. Subpar. Still really good. This was a stage match. A huge game from Jame. Wasn't the best next series, but anyways, that's that's Jame, ladies and gentlemen. So hope you enjoyed that one as always. Peace out.